everyone, this is Jackie from Bronx Baubles. Today, I'm going to be bringing you my recent vintage custom jewelry haul. These are just jewelry that I bought in various different places. And so, let's get started on this jewelry. The first one I want to show you is this amazing, incredibly gorgeous Pierre Cardin necklace. This is a very beautiful vintage Pierre Cardin necklace. It's made with these really cool circular designs. Pierre Cardin was very known for his circular design. A lot of the things that he, he did in his fashion and his jewelry had that circular, circular look to it. Um, Pierre Cardin was born in 1920 in Italy and then soon thereafter he moved to France where he pretty much you know, uh, created his career. And he actually passed away in December of 2020. So he passed away last month. This is a really, really great piece. Uh, his jewelry goes for a lot of money. And if I had to guess when this piece was made, I would say the 1970s. Pierre Cardin was um, originally started studying as an architect. Um, and then his mother who worked as the chief seamstress, seamstress for Balenciaga helped him with the fashion. Um, he did a lot of fashion illustrations. Pierre Cardin was heavily influenced by the space age. And you can see how this necklace has that 60s, late 60s, early 70s vibe. He was very, very popular in the 60s and 70s and people just loved, loved wearing his, his, uh, fashion and I love this piece and it's it's I think these are uh, investment pieces that as the years go by they're just going to increase in value um, each and every one of these metal pieces here has a Pierre Cardin cartouche and Pierre Cardin actually was the one of the first fashion designers to use logos in his designs and so nowadays you see the Gucci's and the Louis Vuitton's, but he was one of the first to really actually put his name on, on um, his fashion. So he's a, an innovator. And if you see a Pierre Cardin necklace, grab it up. The same week that I got this, I actually spotted this at the thrift stores. And this is gonna be given away as a gift to one of my friends. Last week I went to the thrift store and I found this amazing, earrings these were in the regular um earring section and if you look at it from the front end it doesn't seem like much but these are christian dior 1980s earrings and um i just think they're fabulous another recent thrift store find that i have to tell you every time i go out i always look for that one thing that takes me over the edge and in this case it was this guy right here. Look at him. He is incredible. I just fell in love with him immediately. And the shop girl, who her name is Jasmine, when I saw the necklace, which I spotted first, Jasmine pointed out that they were matching earrings and a matching cuff. Now, this is a special piece because this is from Paco Rabanne. And Paco Verabon is another 60s and 70s, really, really famous uh, designer. Um, and he also studied as an architect. In fact, he worked as a, in a cement design company for about 10 years. He started out as a jewelry designer for Balenciaga, for Christian Dior, for Givenchy. And so he, his custom jewelry designs are phenomenal. Um, although he's really known for his metal work. And so that's what happens sometimes, you know, these designers start their careers off as something else. And in this case, Paco Rabanne and Pierre Cardin were both architectures. And so they get influenced by those professions. Paco Rabanne was, is, is very famous for using non-conventional materials. And he did these amazing um, dresses that are made with metal pieces, the metal discs, um, also plastic and, 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 and hard rubber and things like that. And so the day that I got these pieces, which I mean, this, this is an incredible to have this set. 
And to be honest with you, I tried to look up this set and I could not find it. I couldn't find anything comparable to it. So I don't know if this is just a runway piece or a one-off or it's just very, very rare. If anybody out there knows anything about this Paco Rabanne piece, it's out there, please let me know because I have complete set syndrome and I'm always looking for pieces that complete my sets. Anyway, back to the Paco Rabanne. He, um, he was famous for doing these chain mail dresses. And so um, the very day that I got that necklace, I saw this. And this is so reminiscent of a Paco Rabanne chain mail dresses. This is the type of material that he used to make, you know, blouses, halters, pants, mini skirts, shift dresses. Um, and so when I saw this, it just reminded me of Paco Rabanne. So reminiscent of the 70s. Um, if you see it out there, you should go pick them up. Um, they're getting harder and harder to find. And that very, very day, I also spotted this necklace. And I said, you know, after finding that Paco Rabanne piece, I said, you know, I had to get the necklace because it was calling to me. Something that if I owned a Paco Rabanne fashion outfit, I could probably wear it with this necklace. Um, this Paco Rabanne, I, I was trying to figure out what this was. Was it an alien? Was it, you know, a homage to Easter Island? Is this, because the body is very disproportionate from the top piece, it's very alien-like. And it comes to find out that Paco Rabanne was a very spiritual uh, a person, very, very, very private. There's very little written about him, there's very little known about him. And so in the late 1990s, he wrote a book on spiritualism and how spiritualism is a catalyst for creativity. I'm going to say that this is my Paco Rabanne alien man. That's what this is for me. If you know what it is, please let me know. One but thing that I want to mention to you is that this Paco Rabanne alien man pendant and the earrings both have the Paco Rabanne Paris name etched in the back of it. However, the alien man bracelet does not. And so if you were to purchase this bracelet, if you knew that this was a Paco Rabanne piece, you would have to say attributed to. But because I have the other pieces and they have the name on it, I could safely and comfortably say that this is definitely a Paco Rabanne bracelet. I have, and I speak about this in several of my episodes, I have uh, this affliction. It's called Complete Set Syndrome. Uh, it's CSS. And what it is is, I look out for sets that I have and try to complete them. So if I have the necklace and the bracelet, I look out for the earrings or the or the ring and, and interchanging, you know, the different pieces of the set just so I can complete it. So when I spotted this little froggy guy, I said, I have a set just like that. And it is this set right here. This is a museum piece. It's pre-Columbian uh, frogs. And frogs are, 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 are historically symbolizes um, the creation of the ocean as well as fertility and a lot of pre-Columbian jewelry had that motif in it but I like it because it reminds me of the coqui frog in Puerto Rico and so I like frog jewelry and I like critter jewelry in general now this set is not perfect but it's a frog set and that's good enough for me. <laughs> so let's go on to some of the brooches that I found at my last um, haul. And that is this guy right here. This one is a huge, I would say it's about at least four inches tall. It's a Monet. This is from the 70s or probably no later than the 80s. That's what I'm guessing. And it kind of high reminds me of that Star Trek look. It's a really, really nice piece. Then I've spotted this guy, and I got this guy for about $2.50. This is, I just fell in love with the colors. These are totally my colors. This is, let me show you. This is a red and olive green combination. And this is a Sarah Coventry. And this piece here is a pretty substantial piece, and I like my brooches to be big. 
and this is about three and a half inches tall or so. Um, this is such a beautiful, beautiful piece, and I'm looking forward to wearing this um, because these are my colors. These are my favorite colors. And uh, speaking of which, um, I wanted to show you this necklace that I'm wearing. This is a, a necklace. Um, it's made with these uh, glass stones. I think they're actually genuine stones, but I don't know the name of them. And I bought this, I want to say in 2019, and it's reversible. And it has that Indian influence. And so one of the things I want to share with you is uh, tips uh, when I go out looking for costume jewelry is I spotted this lovely, lovely box and it kind of reminded me of this necklace. And so I purchased it and I want to say I paid no more than $3 for it. And now I keep this necklace in this box. Uh, so look out for these unique, beautiful boxes so that you can put your beautiful jewelry inside them. And it just makes it that much more special. So this piece can go right in this box. Um, and then I found this brooch. Look at that. This is just gorgeous. These are all prong set um, and they're red stones, individually prong set in a 3D ball made to look like a cherry. There's um, a, a, a movable like cap here and the cap has these green marcasite, emerald green marcasite that are also prong set. Um, that kind of encapsulate the cherry marcasites for the leaves on the top. And it dangles and it has that beautiful movement that I love. I just love things with a lot of movement. Um, the back here has a cartouche and the cartouche says made in Austria. I remember that after I purchased this when I brought it home that I recently in 2020 at the later end of 2020, I found this piece here. So how serendipitous that I found two pieces. And then in addition, in 2020, I found the matching earrings. So the matching earrings are from Warner and they are also prong set, red crystal um, stones. A lot of Warner pieces have these domes. And if you look at my cat video, I have a domed little kitty cat face that's also made from Warner. These pieces are getting harder and harder to find um, because they're either taken up and people keep them in their collections or they throw them out and they don't know the worth of them. But when you do find these pieces, scoop them up right away. Go on to the bracelets now. I purchased this bracelet. Now this is a modern bracelet. I, this is definitely not vintage, certainly not antique, but I wanted to show you something about this because I want you to start thinking outside the box when you go and look for custom jewelry. This is a Fitbit bracelet. The reason why I purchased this bracelet is because of its uniqueness. If you open it up, it has this cage-like quality. And inside, I placed little treasures. In this case, this is the Benadryl, and I put in a little love note. So in this love note, it says, it is love that makes the impossible possible. This is an Indian proverb. And what I, I thought would be really, really cool is if you have taking certain medications or an aspirin, you can always put that in there. You could put tiny little treasures that you find, little stones, uh, little beads, pearls, things like that. But you can also put in encouraging notes that you might need if you're having a, a relatively difficult day. Now, a secret note compartment. So start thinking about jewelry in terms of different ways that you could um, use it. Look at this deliciousness. Wow, isn't that cool? I Let me just start off with these two. These are just, just fabulous. I call this my Jello Shots bracelet because just look how cute these colors are. And I'll be honest, I normally do not purchase stretchy bracelets, 
but I make exceptions to certain um, rules that I have. Um, and this is an exception because I just love the way it, it just, it just looks so playful and so colorful. I'm gonna have a whole lot of fun warming them. And then at the same day, I found this one bracelet. And this is a lucite or plastic. I'm not sure if it's lucite or plastic. Lemon colored bow bracelet. Tell me that's not a whole lot of fun in your in your arm. One last thing I want to show you. I'll bring it up here. Are these fabulous 80s necklace. I'll show them to you one at a time. Let's get started with this 80s deliciousness. This is a very well, beautifully made necklace from Anne Klein. And when I went to the thrift store that day, there was a plethora of Anne Klein necklaces. I actually bought three. And I really didn't, I don't collect Anne Klein necklaces, but because I just saw them together, it just called out to me. Um, it's totally 80s, and I know that 80s is going to be highly collectible. In fact, there's so many people rocking the 80s right now. Um, but these are super well-made necklaces. You can feel how heavy this is. It's super, super heavy. So here's the swirl. Here is a cute. And then here is a beautiful enamel swirl. Now, I didn't know a whole lot about Anne Klein necklaces, but I did a quick look while I was at the store and Googled it. And these go for quite some money. And so when I saw the prices of them, I think they were about seven or eight dollars each. I scooped them right up. So look out for these big, clunky, chunky 1980s necklaces. If you can get them at a really good price and if they have a, a cartouche or a branded name on it, they're probably going to be the um, uh, investment pieces for you. Um, especially if you can find ones that are like this, the more elaborate, the more time consuming it is, the bigger it is, um, the craftsmanship and the work and the enameling on it. This, this one is the piece that resists on of all three of these. So that, my friends, was my recent custom jewelry haul for 2021. I have several more that I want to show you, but I'm going to wait for another time to, to bring those out to you. I hope that you had fun watching these videos as much as fun as I have putting them together. I have to say that because of COVID, I don't go out anymore. I don't go anywhere. So it's nice to get all dressed up and dolled up and my makeup on. And I put on some of these jewelries that I just don't get a chance to wear and wear these cool, you know, clothes. This is actually uh, an anthropology uh, shirt that has bugle beads from anthropology. I got at the thrift store. This is uh, a J. Crew uh, velour shirt with the matching skirt. So, Thank you so much. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you're already not a sub subscriber. If you like listening to some of the stories that I have to tell with vintage costume jewelry and the inspiration that it gives to people. Um, also, uh, leave me comments. I write back to just about everyone who leaves me a comment. And hit like and send me over to some of your friends who might be interested in knowing a little bit more about costume jewelry. So with that, my friends, ciao.